In this exercise, we're going to create and position a point light. I've saved my progress as primitivebedroom.psd, found inside the 15 lighting folder, and I'm going to double click on the thumbnail for my 3D layer to bring up the 3D panel, and then I'll click on this final icon over on the right hand side, filter by lights, it looks like a light bulb of course, so that we can see the four lights that are available to us. I'm going to run through them up front here, so if nothing else you're reminded of how they work. An infinite light is a very distant, very gargantuan light source, such as the sun. So you may recall that we used an infinite light to light Saturn back in Chapter 1 of the 3D Fundamentals course. And so the light source is so very, very, very big that it shines its light in parallel directions. So all the rays of light are parallel to each other. You can determine the direction of that light source, but you can't determine its position because it is so very, very far away. Think thousands if not millions of miles away. So you've got direction with infinite lights, you do not have position. The opposite is the point light. With a point light you've got a little bulb, for example, and it's shining its rays of light in all different directions in a radial fashion away from the light source. So because it's an omnidirectional light source you can't change its direction, you can only change its position. So you can only change the direction of an infinite light, you can only change the position of a point light, and then spotlights offer you both options. That is a light that's trained in a certain direction, and that is a light that shines in a specific direction, and that is a light that shines from a specific point in a specific direction, so you can change both its location and direction, as we'll see. We're going to use spotlights by the way, for the can lights coming down from the ceiling. And then finally, you've got this guy called the image base light. And that's essentially a light that's wrapped inside of a spherical image. So it's another way to create natural reflections in a scene without resorting to placing the entire scene inside of a spherical panorama. And we'll see how that light source works in a future chapter. But for now, we're going to create a new point light. And you do that by dropping down to the little page icon at the bottom of the 3D panel. And this page icon only lets you create lights. It doesn't matter how you're filtering your 3D scene here inside the 3D panel. You always create lights from this little icon here. And we're going to create a new point light. And I'm going to go ahead and call this guy light bulb. Now, not sure exactly where this light is at this point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and select my fourth tool down, which is going to be one of my lighting tools. In this case, the light slide tool, because the light because the 3D light rotate tool isn't going to do me any good. Again, I don't have directional control with a point light. I just have position control, which I can change using the pan or slide tool. Anyway, so for me, the slide tool is selected, whatever. I'm going to drop down here to this little toggle misc 3D extras icon, click on it, and just confirm that I have both 3D lights and 3D selections turned on. So I should be able to see this light source, but I can't. Obviously, it's illuminating the scene in some place here. So what we need to do is switch over to the camera tool, and we're going to be doing a lot of this. Switch to the camera tool, and let's go ahead and change our view to very wide angle, if you save that one out along with me. And I can see that there is light. It's like buried in the floor right now. Now, it's interesting to note, if I go up to the view menu and choose show and choose 3D ground plane, that the floor is aligned to the 3D ground plane. So the lights are going to have a tendency every once in a while, point light in particular, to arrive at the 000 location, which is right at the intersection of the green and red axes there on the ground plane. And so we just need to move it up to a more reasonable position. Let's go up to view, choose show, get rid of the ground plane because it serves no purpose when we're working here inside of an interior scene. And I'm going to go ahead and lift that light source by switching back to my light tool. And you may notice this happening every once in a while. This is this irritating bug. There's a couple of irritating bugs as you'll learn when working with lights inside of Photoshop. One of them is that Photoshop decides to give you a useless 3D widget like this one here that just has a bunch of sticks but doesn't have any arrows or anything like that. Well, I wouldn't expect it to have the little rotate doodads because after all, I can't change the direction of the light source, but I do need arrowheads because I need to change the position. Here's how you get them. You go ahead and turn a light off. <laughs> Notice they come right back, but of course lights off. So now we need to turn the light back on. Anyway, so turn it off, turn it back on, then you'll get the things you need out of the 3D widget. Now I'm going to drag up on the little blue arrowhead to move the light source up. So it's kind of hovering in the middle of the room. All right, let's go back into the room with the camera by grabbing the camera tool and then switching our view to home position. So by now, I hope you get the idea. The camera is you. That's you wandering in and out of the 3D scene. 
All right, now I can't see the light source once again, so I'm going to switch to my light tool. And I get my sticks. I don't want my sticks. So I'll turn off the light bulb and I'll turn it back on. This is just hilarious hijinks on Photoshop's part. Even though I'm chuckling, I have to tell you, it gets very, very tiresome after a while. I'm crying as I laugh. And I'm going to go ahead and drag on the green arrowhead in order to move the light bulb sort of in the middle of things here. I want it hovering right above the bed for a moment. So I'm going to drag down on the blue arrowhead and you can see that it's sinking into the bed like so. So it's very helpful to have that 3D selection item turned on so that you can see the light and you can see it sink into objects so you have a sense of where it is in 3D space. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drag it over a little bit. And Paul has helpfully provided us with a grid here on the bed. So I can see that this blue line runs right between the two pillows down the center of the bed. And I do want to center the light source for now, even though it's going to go into the lamp eventually. Right now, I just want to place it right above the bed. I'll move it over the top of the bed a little bit, kind of in the middle, actually, like so, by dragging on the green arrowhead. And then I'm going to move it up by dragging on the blue arrowhead. So now I know it's centered directly above the bed. That's great. Here's something I want to demonstrate to you though. You cannot see the light. Now that may seem like an awfully surprising thing to say, but if I switch back over to the scene here and click on scene at the top of the 3D panel, and then I change the quality from interactive to ray trace draft. And you know what? Let's do one more thing. I apologize, but I'm going to Scroll down the list and turn off the illuminator because we don't need it. That's that infinite light that's above the ceiling that we needed momentarily in order to illuminate the scene here inside the interactive mode. We don't need it anymore because we have this light bulb. And I want to see the effect of the light bulb by itself. So we've got this hovering light bulb in the middle of our scene, very present. It's right there above the bed. And yet I have the scene selected, the scene item at the top of the list. I'm going to change quality to ray trace draft. And we're going to wait a moment for Photoshop to do its ray tracing. And I just love, while we wait here, I want you to take a look at this excellent shadow that's being created by the lamp. It is just the most wonderful cartoon shadow on the face of the planet. And it really does give us a sense of how the lamp is put together. We've got this wire that's holding up the lampshade ostensibly. And then we've got this bulb that's set very, very low inside the lampshade. I'm going to ultimately place the point light just on top of that light bulb. So it's more or less centered inside the lampshade. But do you see what I'm talking about here? Look at that scene. We have this light bulb hanging right there in the middle of the room. And yet we're looking directly at the light bulb. And not only is it not hurting our eyes, but it's not even visible. We can't see it. Well, that's the way it works inside of Photoshop. You don't actually see the lights. You see light reflected off of meshes and surfaces and materials and so forth, but you do not see the light itself. And that's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. If you have a light, a bare bulb that's hanging down in the middle of the room, what it means is after you get done illuminating your scenes and placing lights and so forth, then you're going to have to create a 2D effect to represent that light because Photoshop isn't going to do it for you. All right, so we've got ourselves an omnidirectional point light hanging in the middle of the room. In the next exercise, we're going to move this point light into the lamp.